Hey everyone, welcome back. This is an impromptu video, but something I'm going through and experiencing the past couple weeks. Right now, our utility company in our area, uh, Central Hudson and Orange and Rockland, I believe are the first utilities in the country to adopt the IEEE 1547-2018. So why did I take a little bit of a dive into this uh, to understand what's going on? Because right now we have probably 10 customers that are held up in interconnection because we're working with uh, the manufacturer as well as the utility to get grid profiles programmed inside of the microinverters that are in their systems. So there's a verification process when you get PTO. Usually when we get PTO, we submit our electrical inspection forms all of the equipment that we used and we get permission to operate to turn the system on from the utility. Well, and when we first got certified with or went through this process a long time ago, the utility used to come out with a stopwatch. We would shut the systems down and then turn them back on and they would need to take five minutes to turn back on before, sorry, gets a little noisy here on the corner. They would need to take five minutes to turn back on to give the linemen enough time to get off of the power lines or whatever they're doing before the solar came on. So basically, if you lost power, solar shuts off, and when power comes back on, it co the solar comes on five minutes later. So what are we going through right now? Right now, there are systems that we're installing. We're having to upload specific grid profiles for this new standard of interconnection. And just to give you what this IEEE standard is, um, I'll give it to you right here. It lists, it, uh, lists this in, on the standards, IEEE SA Standard Association website. It says, the technical specifications for and testing the interconnection and interop interability between utility electric power systems, EPS, and distributed energy resources, DERs, are the focus of this standard. It provides requirements relevant to the performance, operation, testing, safety, considerations, and maintenance of the interconnection. It includes general requirements, response to abnormal conditions, power quality, islanding, and testing specifications and requirements, for design, production, installation, evaluation, commissioning, and periodic testing. The standard requirements are universally needed for interconnection of DER, including synchronous, uh, synchronous machine, introduction machines, or power inverters and converters, and will be sufficient for most installations. The criteria and requirements are applicable to all DER technologies. DER stand, stands for Distributed Energy Resources, uh, technologies interconnected to EPS, a typical primary and or secondary distribution voltages. Installation of DER on radial primary and secondary distribution systems is the main emphasis of this document. Although installations of DER on primary and secondary network distribution systems is considered, this standard is written considering that DER is a 60 hertz source. So, Going back to the original thing that I was mentioning, when the utility back in the day used to come out to our solar installs, what they would do is the solar shuts off, the grid goes down, the solar shuts off. And we had to certify that the solar would shut off when the grid went down. Now what's taking place is we're no longer just have inverters. And what I, when I was having a conversation with our utility today, they used it as smart inverters. We're no longer we're programming smart inverters on everyone's roof to help not only be inverters, but help the grid. And it also helps the customer because at the end of the day, right now it's a challenge. It's super frustrating going through this right now because we're trying to get customers through the process and get them PTO'd as soon as possible. So this is like a learning experience that the utility is going through. Us, the utility is enforcing. Us as the installer are trying to figure out what exactly the utility wants and then also getting the manufacturers on board to give the utilities and us, the installers, all the information we need to, to supply the utility. So frustrating, but in the end, what is it gonna do? This new grid profile gives the ability 
So when the grid is going down or has short interruptions, this is what I was guided by. This is what I was told by the utility. So if this is different and you're like a techno nerd that went down this wormhole even deeper than I have, please let me know, write a comment in the video below. But the guidance that I've gotten with this new grid profile that we're having to upload to all of our microinverters on our system is that this grid profile, unlike ones in the past, when the grid goes down or has a drop in voltage or hertz in the lines, they're, instead of the inverter shutting off immediately, what it's gonna do is ramp down, ramp down, and after five minutes, if the grid doesn't come back, it's gonna shut the inverter down, but within that window of five minutes, if the grid comes back, the system is gonna go back online immediately. It's not gonna to have to wait five minutes. So what I was told is that when there's a grid outage or intermittent power on a line, it's shutting everybody's solar down. So times that by, let's just say there's however many homes that have solar on that feeder, when the grid goes down, it's shutting all those systems off, but when it's coming back on, it's having to wait five minutes for everyone's solar to kick back on, which is not giving the, enough, the utility enough time to get a peaker plan or a power station to supply that power, and it's putting sh more st added stress on the grid. What this is going, going to allow us to do is, when the grid goes down for that period less than five minutes, and then comes back, the solar is gonna kick on immediately. So what does that mean for the homeowner? In those situations, you're going to have the system back online sooner, which is great, producing energy. And then also it's gonna take the strain off of the grid. So your home's not gonna to have to pull power during that five minutes when the grid goes down. You're gonna be able to have that solar, it's ramping it down, but when it comes back online, the grid, you're gonna be instantaneously producing power and not have to wait five minutes for the solar to kick back on. So it's better for your home and better for the grid as a whole. Wow, so that was uh, as a, you know, when you're in solar, you're constantly learning and going down different wormholes to figure out what the hurdles are, where you're having challenges. And this is a hurdle that we're going through right now, just getting this standard uh, figured out, which, we have, we now have our customers getting approved. These 10 customers that were held up, their systems are now all getting approved. We got the standard figured out, figured out between the utility, the manufacturer, and then combining that with us, the installer, getting all that paperwork the way the utility wants. So hopefully that was helpful in going through um, this new standard that is being adopted. And specifically here, our utilities, Central Hudson and Orange and Rockland, are the first utilities in the country who have adopted it. So they're really the standard. So they're not letting things slide because if they let it slide, then that's gonna set an example that other utilities are gonna reference, hey, you let this slide, why'd you let that slide? Now we have to do the same thing. So um, every I is dotted, T's are crossed right now um, because we just gotta you know, set the example for this new standard and this new grid profile that's having to be uploaded. So. Right now in the field, when we're just commissioning a system, we put the panels in, everything we're doing, but now we're having to upload that grid profile into the inverters as well. All right, signing out. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any insight for me, maybe something I missed or got, um, you know, maybe was off in this video, write in the comments below. I'm interested to, to hear what you have to say. Thanks.